Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Wellspun Enterprises Limited Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Salil Bawa, Head of Group Investor Relations, Wellspun World. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Sagar. Good afternoon to all of you. On behalf of Wellspun Enterprises Limited, I welcome all of you to the company's Q4 and FY2024 earnings call. Along with me today, I have here Mr. Sandeep Garg, Managing Director of Wellspun Enterprises Limited, Mr. Sorin Patel, Managing Director of Wellspun Michigan Engineers Limited, Mr. Lalit Jain, Chief Financial Officer for Wellspun Enterprises, Siddharth Bhardwaj, Head IR for Wellspun Enterprises. We hope you have had a chance to review the investor presentation that we filed with the exchanges. The presentation is also available on the company's website. During today's discussion, we may be making references to this presentation. Please do take a moment to review the safe harbor statement in our presentation. As usual, we will start the forum with an opening remarks by our leadership team, and then we'll open the floor for your questions. Once the call gets over, should you have any further queries that remain unanswered post the earnings call, kindly feel free to reach out to any one of us. With that, I would now like to hand over the floor to Mr. Sandeep Gar, Managing Director of Westport Enterprises. Over to you. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Wells Fund Enterprises Q4 and FY24 results conference call. I would like to thank all participants for their presence. We have uploaded our results on the exchanges and our website, and I hope you have had a chance to review the same. We start FY25 with the highest ever standalone opening order book of rupees 12,200 crores. This order book includes close to rupees 3,600 crores of operation and maintenance. This is a clear reflection of WL's diversification strategy and our meticulous approach to order selection. The water vertical now has a share of close to 67% in the order mix, with the balance being in the transportation vertical, if you are to consider only the EPC order book. Post our results, we have emerged L1 in one of the MPSRDC road projects, where our quoted price is rupees 1,864 crores approximately, the details of which have been uploaded on stock exchange. We would inform you further details of the project once the LOA is issued by the client. Our subsidiary, Western Michigan Engineers Limited, has an opening order book of rupees 1,600 crores. This makes our consolidated order book a formidable rupees 13,800 crores, which is about four times our consolidated revenue for the FY24. Although it is not material from the listed entity point of view, but I would like to mention that Westman Michigan has also emerged L1 for an order worth rupees 170 crores, the details of which will be shared by Mr. Saren Patel 
Managing Director of WNEL in his address. I'm certain you will appreciate the immense visibility such an order book provides. We are certainly in the housing here, and we are working to further build on our project pipeline. A future ordering within the transportation vertical, we have seen a continued muted period in the last quarter. Having said this, we see promising road opportunities from NHAI and in the state of Maharashtra in the next few quarters. I would like to reiterate that we at Wellspun are extremely positive on opportunities that lay ahead of us. We believe the country's capex spend will double over the next five years from the base of approximately rupees 11 lakh crores. Our balance sheet strength positions us extremely well to seize on this opportunity and thus deliver many years of profitable growth. At Wellspun, we strive to achieve excellence in every sphere of activities that we take on. In this direction, we are pleased to share that Wellspun Enterprises has been recognized and certified as a great place to work by GPTW Certification Agency. Wellspun also saw one of the highest employee participation among the corporates, which was at 96% during the certification. I'm also extremely pleased to share that trust index of 88% of Western enterprise employees have rated us as a great place to work. Our ranking will be announced on June 20th, which we will share with you in our next engagement. While we have grown sequentially on quarter basis, our revenue in FY24 has dropped on a year-on-year basis, year -year basis by 8%. Our standalone FY revenue is Rs. 2,450 crores, while total income is Rs. 2,553 crores. Though we expected to do a bit better on revenue, our holds on workfront on our SNRP and VRP projects and continued challenge on our ESR construction and on UPJGM project led to deferment of revenues to FY25. I want to assure you all that our teams across the transportation and water verticals are continuously solving these issues on real-time basis. I would also like to mention that in FY24, we achieved EBITDA of Rs. 439 crores on standalone basis, which is the highest standalone EBITDA for our company in any financial year. Our consolidated, on consolidated basis, our revenue has grown to Rs. 2,872 crores with total income of Rs. 3,063 crores. This marks the highest consolidated revenue in the history of our company. Similarly, our consolidated EBITDA of Rs. 6,016 crores for FY24 is the highest in the history of the company. I, I stand corrected, Rs. 616 crores in FY24 is highest in the history of the company. I would like to emphasize that the model we follow for developmental projects involves a life cycle of five years. This includes the period of project construction, stabilization, and monetization. Considering this life cycle, we have delivered an average at percentage of over 12% in the past five years. The accounting classification notwithstanding, this bad percentage is a reflection of business potential and the model that we follow. The details of the financials will be covered by CFO Mr. Lalit Jain in his address. I am also pleased to inform that the board has recommended dividend of 30% on face value, that is rupees 3 per share for approval by the shareholders. I want to mention that excluding the current recommendation of the board, we have distributed over rupees 
700 crores by way of dividends and buybacks, which translates to return of about rupees 50 per share. Now, coming on some operational highlights on major projects for the concluded quarter. Our ham project, Anta Simaria, has gathered pace in execution and we anticipate this to continue as we target the completion. The bridge work is more or less, is complete by more than 90%. The balance works are primarily road and approach, which we target to complete by Q3 FY25. Our hand road project of Satanatha from Nagapatinam, HNRP, is progressing but I must share that this, the pace is slower than our plans. We have interacted with clients on both non-availability of corn ash and earth materials and delays in approval of mines by earth for ex earth ex extraction. We remain confident to deliver the project on targeted timelines. Our EPC work of Varanasi Arangabad NH2 is progressing well, and we are on track to meet our completion target date. It is an honor to share that our section of the National Highway was selected to be inaugurated by the Honorable Prime Minister, which is a testimony to the quality of execution that we deliver for our clients. Coming on our water vertical, our UP Jajan project in the state of UP under the state, state, Maharashtra, state of water and sanitation mission is progressing well and despite challenges of multi-locational distributed work, this project has crossed a significant milestone of 50% of, of targeted house, household connections. Skilled manpower shortage, especially for ESR, has affected pace of progress. We are deploying various strategies to overcome this shortage, including the pre cast option and also speed, which we have proposed to the client. Taravi wastewater treatment facility, our project to deliver the clean meteor river, has progressed well. After a delay, period of delays in earlier quarters, we have moved ahead with the improved execution. We have planned our execution in a manner to minimize the impact of the impeding monsoon months. We have added another significant order in the last quarter, and I'm pleased to inform that the design, build, and operate DBO for the development of the new 2,000 MLB water treatment plant at the Bandu complex, including civil, mechanical, and electrical instrumentation work, has been a, has been awarded to the company. The project is to is designed. Sorry, the project is to be designed and constructed within a period of 48 months from the notice of to proceed, which is still awaited and thereafter operated for a period of 19 years. 15 years, sorry. The total contract value is GST, excluding GST is rupees 4,123 crores. The split of which is that the design build is 2,243 crores, while co and is 1,888 crores. During the quarter, we continued with our efforts for development of oil and gas feed blocks housed in the joint venture Adani Wells Fund Exploration Limited. We submitted our EDP to the regulator for our block MD OSN 2005 by 2, or what we call Mumbai block, in this quarter. Subject to the approval of EDP by government, our endeavor is to commence gas production by FY2627. We have awarded the contract for well design and engineering and also finalized the feed contractor. We have the approval to invest rupees 100 crores into this venture in the current financial year. 
I would like to reiterate that in line with our prudent approach, we will come and we will commit future capital only upon clear visibility of commercial viability. As I conclude, I'm delighted to share that Westman Enterprise was bestowed with two national accolades at the 15th CIDC Wish Karma Awards, Construction, HSE Award, and Artisan and Supervision Award for UPJJM Mission and our EPC work at Varanasi Aurangabad Road Project. With this, I now hand over the call to Mr. Saren Patel, MD of WME Health. Thank you, Sandeep, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to share that we have clocked the highest quarterly revenue in Q4 FY24 at INR 141 crores. Our revenue for full FY24 is INR 411.8 crores. This marks a growth of approximately 30%. Having completed the process of integration with Wellspan Enterprises, I am extremely optimistic of increasing our growth momentum in FY25 and beyond. This performance has been consistent from a margin perspective, wherein we have achieved an EBITDA margin of 23% for the full year, which translates to a whopping 99 crores. Both our current projects, as well as potential new wins, give me immense confidence of sustaining these margin levels. We have currently 18 projects, which are spread across micro tunneling, segment tunneling, marine works, pumping stations, rehabilitation of underground sewer lines, and bridge construction. These combined projects give us an outstanding order book of approximately INR. 1,627 crores, with INR 170 crores of operations and maintenance. This order book is largely executable over the next 36 months. I must add here that I'm not including an order of 170 crores from the MCGM to rehabilitate underground sewers using glass reinforced polymer liners, where Elspan, Michigan has been declared L1. I would like to reiterate that we foresee vastly larger opportunities ahead. These opportunities are both from new geographies due to Wellspun World's wide reach, as well as new initiatives that we are evaluating, such as working with new technologies. We have been an engineering solution provider for urban and infrastructure needs, which is a niche area, and we wish to operate in the specialized niche areas of tunneling and water rehabilitation projects on a larger scale. Historically, we have been a very profitable company and our EBITDA growth over the last three years has been a CAGR of 33%. I would now like to share a brief on an exciting new technology partnership that we will be introducing to India. SmartOps is a cutting edge technology to convert gray water into an asset. It is modular, scalable, cost-efficient and easy to deploy technology in a water body or drain point to rejuvenate or recycle the water, rivers, sewers, ponds, and lakes. This involves biological treatment of wastewater with minimum wastage and provides tertiary treated water, portable water for commercial and domestic use. Besides smart ops, we at Wellspun Michigan Engineers are pioneering hypertunnel which will replace or substitute in part the existing methods of box pushing for road under bridges and the widely used NATM method for hand mine tunneling. A unique combination of proven technologies using artificial intelligence, 3D printing, and swarm robotics from diverse industries to build a tunnel and enhance any underground scheme. This is a new approach, a radically new approach, which is safer and more sustainable than current techniques, and is claimed to be five times faster than the current way. Our order pipeline is healthy. And with the rollout of the new technologies for the future that I mentioned earlier, we retain our sights on projects worth 
INR 20,000 crores. We will be bidding for these on a selective basis. With this, I will close my remarks and hand the call to Lalit Jain, CFO of Belspan Enterprise Limited, for updates on the financials. Over to you, Lalit. Thank you, Mr. Sony. And good afternoon to everyone, and many thanks for being part of this call. I'm sure you would have had an opportunity to review our financial numbers published. Our standalone 5.4 total income is 2.53 crores and freight is 285 crores for FI24. I'm happy to inform that we have delivered the highest reported EBITDA of which 439 crores, which work out to a margin of 17.2%. For part of four, FI24, our revenue from operations stood at 644 crores, and along with other income, our total income was at Rs. 665 crores. We reported an EBITDA of Rs. 97 crores, which worked out to a margin of 14.5%. Our profit before tax for Q4 FI24 is Rs. 87 crores, which worked out to 90% conversion of our EBITDA to PBT. This is predominantly because of our unique business model. This gives us the ability to retain a very large part of our EBITDA. I am confident we will continue to scale our operation while being due to the successful model. You may recall that we have given a guidance of reported EBITDA margin in the range of 13 to 14 percent. We will, we will maintain this. Our income has dropped by 64 percent. Our other income has dropped by 64 percent to 22 crores from 60 crores in Q4 FI23. This is due to the high that's from Q4 FI23, where we had the large part of our profit from the asset sell to active on our balance sheet. Likewise, our finance cost has dropped 67% year over year to Rs. 8 crore in this quarter. Since we retired NCB that was outstanding in Q4 FI23, I do not anticipate an increase in interest expenses from this level in near future. Our effective tax rate will be 25% in the normal cost. But for this quarter, it is close to 28% due to additional tax provisions taken from for earlier years. Our standalone profit after tax is Rs. 64 crore. Please note, this is not compatible with Q4 FI23 numbers. There was an asset sell transaction we undertook with Active Highway in December 2022, which resulted in exceptional income of Rs. 37 crore. Now coming to our consulate numbers. Our there are more than 20 parties in the conference. Our consulate FI24 total income is Rs. 3060 crores and FED is Rs. 319 crores for FI24. I am happy to inform that we have delivered the highest consulate reported EBITDA of Rs. 616 crores, which worked out to be a margin of 20.1%. For Q4 FI24, our revenue from operation stood at Rs. 821 crore, and along with other income, our total income was at Rs. 867 crore. We reported an impact of Rs. 157 crore, which worked out to a margin of 18.1%. Our TBT Rs. 120 crore, and paid standard Rs. 78 crore. I would like to mention that due to consolidation of Michigan engineers as a subsidiary, the contribution of Michigan engineers towards EBITDA is Rs. 31 crore. However, 49.9% of Michigan PET has been reversed due to minority interest. We have a strong balance sheet with the net debt of Rs. 923 crore as on 31st March 2024 at standard level. The reduction of Rs. 625 crore as a compared to 31st March 2023 is on account of buyback versus Rs. 289 crore payout for MEPL acquisition of Rs. 137 crore, followed by the equity investment of Rs. 156 crore in ongoing projects, and remaining amount used for the working capital. Now I transfer this call to Mr. Gutt. Thank you. Thank you, Rale. Now, before we open the forum for question and answers, I would like to correct myself. Apparently, while talking about the new win of which we have been declared L1. I said the name of the client wrongly and I would want to correct myself to say that post our results we have emerged L1 
in one of the MSRDC road projects, that, that is in the Maharashtra, there are quoted prices approximately rupees 1,864 crores. I would request to bring this correction on record. With this, I will request that the floor be open for question and answers. Thank Over you. to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Again, please press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Siddharth Singh from Green Portfolio. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, sir, so my first question is, as the semiconductor industry is witnessing a growing demand for, sir, ultra-pure water, so, sir, does our company have a technology to build an infrastructure for that? or how we are seeing that opportunity? Can you repeat the question, please? Sir, I am saying that in semiconductor industry, there is a need of ultra-pure water, okay? So, sir, as we are into the water infrastructure segment, so do we have, uh, do we are targeting that technology also, or what, what are our take on that ultra-pure water? So let me let me uh, respond to this question by saying that we are not into technology per se ourselves of development. Okay? okay, we use the existing technologies to deliver projects. In terms of the technology associations that we enjoy at this point in time, we we enjoy a relationship with Xylem, which is uh, once was one of one of the largest water treatment and product supplier. We also enjoy our relationship with uh, Veolia, which is the largest water uh, treatment uh, technology supplier. So technology is something which we have an access to anything that we should, should we require for a particular project. Michigan on its own, Western Michigan on its part, is associating with new technologies and new ways of achieving desired results, but that that technology is not targeting ultra pure water. So I hope I've answered the question. Yeah, yes, Professor. And sir, what, so can you give the detail of current bid pipelines? Uh, how much order you were bidded for in water and transportation vertical, and also the historical conversion rate, conversion rate? So normally in the water, our conversion rate is extremely high because we have bid it very selectively. Now talking about the opportunity on water business, there, are, there is a huge opportunity as we all know. Uh, the short term um, uh, opportunity of pipeline that we see at the top of the canvas is about, uh, about a lakh cross. Uh, in the in the areas that we we are interested in, uh, so this this is a short term, which means that we expect these to fructify in FY25. As we speak at this point in time, there are no uh, open bids on water. There is an open bid on a transportation section, but there there are no open bids on the water segment. Okay. okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pananjay Bagrodia from ASK. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on your numbers. I wanted to ask you, you mentioned that there's a 3 lakh crop project uh, for water available, uh, which out of that, how much would be addressable to us and over what segments? Are you seeing this 3 lakh crop? So, 
approximately see if, if, if that's a larger canvas which we, which is a short term and a medium term by um, water segment the segments that we have we have targeted are primarily distributed in three um, uh, heads that is the transmission treatment and distribution so uh, treatment per se includes the water water and a sewage or a wastewater treatment desalination and river rejuvenation so in treatment we cover three aspects while transmission includes the uh, pipeline and the river linking works hmm. so if if i were to look at these this total canvas Mm, we see opportunities in the Maharashtra of about one lakh twenty-five thousand crores, in the Madhya Pradesh about more than fifty thousand crores, in Uttar Pradesh approximately seventeen thousand crores, and the list goes on. Hmm. No, so in this three lakh crore, how much would be accessible to us? Per se, would it be only the lag of treatment? Because uh, the pipes would come in corps, right? So that won't come in the transmission part. Won't come to us. So only the treatment part will be to us, right? No. So when we, when I'm talking about these are the project values, which mm -hmm. we can do, which we can target uh, in terms of construction contracts. Now EPC basis. Mm -hmm. Now, with if the if the pipes have to be bought from a company, whether it is Westpan Corp or any other company, that will be a supply for the company which wins it, rather mm -hmm. than anything else. Sure. So it's not an exclusive there. Huh. Okay. And in terms of, um, so regarding this right now in the water opportunity, you said, so we're just coming back to the same thing. So 3 lakh crore, uh, is there any idea in terms of like when this could be executed by, how would it go, and how are we seeing in the Jalsinal on their official website, they are above 80% in terms of their targeted households. Is that something which you think we are ending the cycle? How are we looking at that? Sorry, could you repeat the last part of your question, please? So, on the official Jal, uh, Jal Jeevan mission on their website, they say that a significant portion of their water of taps which they wanted to reach are done. But there's not been, ex uh, nothing has been explained on how much is now for the river linking. Uh, so, where, where, how do we see that segment grow? Because I believe the tap, the last leg has been done in most of the households. So household connections and the government uh, government is pretty much focused on uh, delivering it and uh, the um, uh, the official website I I haven't browsed it so I will take a face value as okay. to what we have done but as far as the orders that we have we have crossed the household connections of more than uh, fifty percent on thirty first of March and the pace at which is growing I'm sure. We would be somewhere close to 65, 70 percent at this point in time. However, um, the government is uh, on ter in terms of water interlinking, uh, river interlinking. The projects are just about to take off. So they will be bidded going forward in the, after the elections are over. That, that's what our anticipation is. So that this that work will start unfolding from FY25 and go for a, a few years going forward. Okay, okay, and so okay, so okay, fine. So for us now, since we are not in the last leg of distribution, since we are in transmission treatment, for us the opportunities will be uh, much bigger going ahead, uh, vis-a-vis -vis some of the PVC players who are in the distribution part. Is that the right way to answer this? No, I think we we I would want to correct that we are already in distribution. If you look at it, we our Devas Water Project is distributing water to the industries in MP, and in uh, UPJJM we are already doing distribution to the villages about 1,070 odd uh, schemes, about 2,500 villages. So uh, we are already in distribution. So it's not a arena which is outside our uh, uh, capability to de to deliver projects. Okay, fantastic. And then lastly, um, in the order book, we have around now roughly around 14,000 crores. Uh, how do we see that executable over time, and uh, how should one look at those numbers? So, um, as as we look at it this at this time, you know, I I would want to say that the 
FY25 looks uh, healthy. We we anticipate from the orders that we already have in hand, mm. somewhere around 3,000 plus crores of revenue should mature on a standalone basis. Uh, 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 basis for the W West One Enterprises. Uh, and the orders that are in the offing, we expect that we will be able to add another about 300 crores to this number. Okay. And uh, in terms of the consolidated level, we do believe that we will be somewhere around 4,000 crores on a consolidated basis. Okay, so it's fair enough to assume that one third of the order book gets is executed over every year. Yeah. That more or less? Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, lastly, just uh, coming around, are we looking at any CapEx number for the year? How should one look at that? Uh, the CapEx number, as I, I uh, the pre-committed CapEx at this point in time into the business is approximately, for the HAM project is approximately about 200 crores. Mm -hmm. And uh, about 100 crores towards the um, uh, oil and gas. Uh, the balance ca uh, cash flow, uh, balance uh, cash reserve is available for any uh, further growth of the business. Perfect. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sri Krishna Agrawal from Agrawal Consultancy. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Am yes. I audible, sir? Yes. Yeah, okay. just wanted to know, sir, you have the existing order book of around 15,661 crores, including your in subsidy. So, and your no normal time limit is three years for completion of the project. So, can we assume that the annual turnover will be increasing to 5,000 crores per year? As I just said, that uh, we would give you, um, that we expect the uh, turnover for FY25 on a consolidated basis to be around 4,000 crores. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Shah from GC Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, so firstly, I mean, from our press release, we've mentioned that we have five road project bids where the results are awaited. But I believe this would be the yesterday. And does it include the recent MSRDC order win, where we are relevant? Not the win, but where we are relevant? Yeah, so the, the out of the five uh, open bids at that point in time when we, we went to the um, press release, mm -hmm. uh, four have opened, and one of them we have, op we have opened, emerged, uh, L1. There's one one bid which is still not open, which is the NHAI. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. we are awaiting that result whenever it opens. Perfect. Uh, that's the first question. So the second question, I mean, we've mentioned uh, we've derived the we mentioned the Michigan top line at around 141 crores uh, for the quarter. What is the corresponding EBITDA and PAT for the quarter from Michigan? Give us a second, we'll give you the number. Sure. The corresponding EBITDA is uh, 99 crores. Uh, That's for the year. For the full year. For the, for the full year. year. Uh, it is... Uh, Just give us a second, we'll, we'll sure, just sure. look at the number. For the quarter, you want crores. 51 crores. For the quarter. For the yeah. quarter, Michigan, if it's like 32 crores. 32 crores. Got it. Fair point. And uh, last quarter, we gave a guidance of 500 crores for Michigan. But if I just derive the console minus standalone, I mean, standalone, we've given a guidance of 3,000 crore on existing book plus another 2 to 300 crore on the new wins. So our Michigan guidance would be approximately six to 700 crores for the current year? That is correct. It will be about 600 plus crores. 600 plus crores. Perfect. And another last question is, uh, sir, from when will we uh, start uh, uh, the execution of Bhandu, pro uh, Bhandu project? As I 
stated in my opening statement, we are awaiting the um, notice to proceed. I think uh, post the election process is complete, we should get the notice to proceed and thereafter we will start the work. If it is very close to the, uh, uh, you know, monsoon period, we will not hit the ground. We will hit the ground post the monsoon period. Post the monsoon period. Perfect. And uh, on Michigan, just lastly, uh, the 600 crore top line would be at stable margins of existing 23-24%. Am I correct in assuming that? That is correct. Great, great. Thanks, sir, for, for an encouraging guidance. Looking forward to meeting the uh, our, our own, own expectations, sir. Great. Thanks a lot and all the way, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, if you have any questions, you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from the line of Darshil Javeri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Congratulations on a great set of results. I uh, hope I'm audible. Yes, you are, Darshil. Yeah, uh, so, so a lot of my questions have already been answered. I just wanted to just pick your brain a bit in terms of uh, the margin side. So uh, on a consolidated basis, our margins can hit 15%, right? Because uh, 600 crores will be at a higher and then our normal 14% margin in the standalone. So is that a fair assumption, sir? For Michigan, you are talking? No. No, no. On a console blended basis. Of the margin is, uh, if I get you correctly, the, the uh, Question is, what is our guidance on the margin for the FY25 uh, on a consolidated basis? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, so our, our guidance would remain uh, at the level. Uh, sorry, uh, we don't have a guidance on a consolidated basis on margins. Uh, we, uh, as the CFO has mentioned, we will retain our guidance on margins going forward at 13 to 14 percent on a reporting basis on standalone. Uh, on a consolidated basis, as Michigan evolves, we will uh, maybe look forward to giving guidance on the same in the near future. Uh, okay, fair enough, sir. Uh, and just wanted to ask, sir, uh, with regards to currently out of elections or something, so is that, can our order book be impacted with a change in regime, or how do we just see that risk in terms of? How we are going forward. So, so uh, the order book that we have in um, under our belt remains un unchanged for sure, uh, irrespective of any governmental regime change. And I believe that the forecast also remains unchanged because uh, no matter which government comes in, the, I think the, the impetus on the development of infrastructure shall stay. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, fair enough, sir. Oh, that's it from my face. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sri Harsha KJ, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir, and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, the EBITDA, EBITDA margin is uh, reported of 20.1% for financial year 24. Is it uh, like if it's sustainable going forward or will it remain at uh, 13 to 14%? As, uh, as we have always maintained, our, our guidance is 13 to 14% on the EBITDA. Um, this term, I mean, is an aberration to that normal, but we will we will strive to improve. But that's the, our guidance for you to consider. Ah, uh, um, another question, sir, regarding the order prospects of the big pipeline. You told on the water projects it's around three lakh crore. And uh, what is the order prospect for the transport uh, sector and uh, and then for the other other subsidiary? So, uh, the auto pipeline, as well as the NHI, uh, has announced that they will be awarding about 5,200 crores of projects on coal. Uh, 
um, we see a order um, substantive order being announced in the FY25. Uh, it could be in somewhere in the ranges of about two lakh crores uh, that that are likely to come through in the coming months or coming quarters. Uh, and as uh, was stated by uh, uh, um, MD Western Michigan, that their order pipeline is to the extent of about 20,000 crores. Uh, however, in terms of what we believe that will fructify, I think um, uh, the order wins for uh, us on a standalone basis may be somewhere in the ranges of 6,000 crores and about uh, about uh, about 700 odd crores uh, for Michigan. So that's what we would believe that, that we would be uh, happy guiding about. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask questions, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Sarvesh Gupta from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Most of the questions have been answered, and congratulations on a good set of numbers. So just one clarification, this 13 to 14 percent uh, guidance for EBITDA margin is excluding other income or including other income? It, it is at the, uh, it is at the uh, reported EBITDA level, which includes the other income. Okay. And uh, secondly, on the oil and gas side, as I understand, so there is a uh, 100 crore sort of an investment that we are planning in this year. And uh, in, in FI 25-26, you have said revenue from the first block to be expected by, all, by but I also heard something on FI 27. So uh, is it FI 26 that we, uh, we expect the revenues to flow in? No, we don't expect the oil and gas revenues to flow in in FY26. If there is uh, any past information that you are referring to, I would guide that it, the earliest that we can uh, expect the revenues is 26, 27, that that too subject to the approval of the EDP which we have submitted to the government. So uh, we don't know how much time it will take to approve. Once it is approved, we will give you a better guidance on that. Understood. And uh, on the earlier question, I want to clarify that the guidance of 13-14% on the reported EBITDA level is for the standalone and not for consolidated. Yes, so it is reported EBITDA including other income for a standalone. That is correct. Understood, sir. Thank you. All the rest. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shyam Garg from Ladder of Finance Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, I just want to know a few details about uh, the working capital cycle, which has been increased this year, how uh, it will come out in the coming years. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, sir, I just want to know about the working capital cycle for the coming years. Uh, we see an increase in working capital day and how it's going to uh, go in future. So we do not expect any increase in the working capital days going forward. Uh, we will be in the same ballpark numbers going forward as well. Okay. And so is there any um, uh, payments which are due from the government and which are under arbitration? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, I'm losing you. Yeah. Are there any payments from the government which are due and are under arbitration? We, we have no, yeah. we have no arbitration at this point in time with any of our clients. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Devakar Rana from Prudent Equity. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. So my question is basically you are giving 4,000 crore uh, revenue guidance for FY25. 
if i remember correctly in last phone call you you said that you know we will be doing 3000 crore this year basically in fy24 and uh, the uh, the revenue growth for fy25 will be 15 to 20 percent but you know uh, right now you are saying that the revenue will be 4000 crore so it is kind of a 39 percent growth in fy25 so you know so uh, i was asking basically so what made you change the guidance for you know from 25 to 39 percent for fy25 so the, the there are two reasons of change number one there is a fair visibility of orders that we have in hand and the and the, um, the since they are starting uh, at the year start of the financial year it has the past forecast a bit better uh, and uh, the 4000 crores which you are referring to is on a consolidated basis the guidance for the standalone remains with at a level of 3000 crores from the orders in hand and a 300 crores upside on it by the orders that we anticipate to get. So the guidance is anything between 3000 crores and 3300 crores. Okay, sir. that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. For any further questions, please press star and one. The next question is from the line of Saket Kapoor from Kapoor and Company. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, Namaskar, sir. And thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my question pertains to our uh, Jal Jeevan mission in the state of uh, Uttar Pradesh. Sir, herein you have alluded uh, to the fact that there were some some issues pertaining to execution, which I missed, missed in your opening remarks. Thank you. Sure, you will clarify. See, the, uh, the project involves construction of um, ESRs or what we call ele ele elevated storage reservoirs. Uh, the, uh, these are, um, as you know, the tanks that you see around in a lot of places. The number of tanks to be built is substantially high and that much of skill set manpower is not available at this point in time. So. Uh, to do it in, in a conventional method, uh, that is one area where we were lagging. So we have op we we have opted for doing it as a precast solution, uh, so as to expedite the project. And we have also made a suggestion for steel tanks, which is uh, which is going to expedite it further. So we expect the project to uh, overcome its construction difficulties in the at 525 as we move along. So th th this was the only reason that led to lower execution or the completion part? In the, in, in the UPJ gen section. So as I said, there were certain holes on the uh, major projects which we are undertaking right now, which is the uh, VRP uh, and SNRP. Uh, where the, because of certain client holds and the local holds, uh, work fronts got stuck, which we have got released to a large extent now. Uh, so uh, that resulted in loss of some revenue, which got transferred to FY25 from FY24. And when we look at the size of this opportunity, since Uttar Pradesh in itself uh, is equivalent to uh, having population equivalent to other countries in the in the world. So, uh, can you can you allude to the size of this SJM mission? I think so. Uh, other uh, and also the other players who are keenly uh, awarded the uh, these packages and, uh, uh, and what's the total size? And going ahead, what is uh, what are the further opportunities post the execution which you are anticipating? आपने से 25 करोड़ क्या एक नंबर दिया है करंट ईयर के लिए uh, post that also, there, does it involve other scope of work? And, and uh, how, total, how many players are working over this uh, project? Sir? The total size is how much? So, uh, you asked a lot of questions in one question. I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. Uh, uh, so, currently, if I get it, uh, if my information is right, uh, UP alone has about 70,000 villages uh, currently being connected. 
through the UPJJM mission. So now this mission will not get completed with this. We still will have a lot of states like Rajasthan you know, is coming up, MP is coming up. So there are a lot many states which will have a lot, of, lot many villages still to be connected. Uh, UPJJM in, in, uh, in UP alone has four phases. We have participated in phase two uh, of the project. So I think in terms of the continued continuation of the opportunity, this will continue for my assessment for next three, four years. Uh, but the larger opportunity in water will unlock once these connections are made because the reuse of water will become important. Uh, the, the cycle of life of water will begin once the water is available. And hence, I see the opportunity as far as water is concerned for next 20 years to be there around all these uh, water, fresh water supply, re, uh, processing of used water, and reuse of the water, and making the uh, non-revenue water into a asset as well as making the waste water into an asset. This life cycle for the country, I see for at least next 20 years. Okay, so the scope, just to dwell further and conclude also, so the, the scope of work for life fund would be greater than just the supply of water. This is what the, uh, your uh, understanding. That is correct. And, and sir, on the number of players who are involved in this uh, project, uh, could you name a few of them other than, we have also heard NCC is uh, speaking about the just given mission for the Pradesh value that 16,000 crore. Then there's one other player, Bindia Tenilink, they are spending 6,000 crores. So just to take the size and the key players, if you could adduce a few names. So there are other than the people involved includes right from the top of the line, Larson and Tubro, to uh, smaller players who have got, taken about 400, 500 uh, villages. Uh, so the spectrum is pretty large. I would think at this point in time, UPJJM, related projects, there are about at least 20 entities, if not more, involved. Uh, top of the scale will be the likes of LNT and the NCCs, and the bottom of the scale would be people uh, which are new entrants with uh, like Chatson, et cetera, et cetera. So where, where they, they have taken small steps, ninja steps towards this uh, opportunity. So uh, the spectrum is pretty large. Uh, but the opportunity is much larger. That's what I and, the, and it will gather momentum for this financial year. This is what uh, the understanding is. Since what I are, am saying is UPJJM, uh, subsurface schemes, surface schemes, linking schemes, all is a very large opportunity. But the larger opportunity after this that will unfold is once the water has been used, what do we do about it? So that's the larger opportunity that shall unfold. Right. And for this year, 2,900 car target difference. Uh, for execution. Sorry? For, for this financial year, 2,900 crore worth of uh, the project uh, under this. No, no, no. The, the, the 2,600, 700 crores is my total UPJJM project in uh, for a dis distribution, out of which I think uh, we have delivered about. Uh, 50%, the 50%, out of the 50%, I think majority of it will be delivered in FI25. Some of it may spill onto FI26 as well. Okay. So then, uh, then the 2900 value which you provide in your uh, in your presentation, page number 38-39, that alludes to which part of the story? Can you, can, can you just bear with us as we open that slide? Can yes. somebody open that slide, please? Sorry. 38 and 39, please. 38 and 39, please. Open. So just to clarify the presentation, what it, what, um, it is the scope of the project, which is about 2,900 crores in totality. So out of which 50% is executed at this point in time, approximately. Right. Am I clear to you? 
uh, uh, sir, I am just missing these two numbers, two five four four and two nine double zero. So, if you could tell what was the, what was the size of the order awarded to us, how much has been executed last year or current year? What are they? So, two thousand nine hundred crores is the awarded contract value, and the number of villages that we are connecting is two thousand five hundred and forty-four. Right. Am I? Uh, is yes. that clear? Yes, sir. Thank and you. and how much have we executed for FY24? And how much FY25 will be? Up to FY24, we have executed approximately 50%, and the balance, the majority, will be done in FY25. Uh, some of the work will spill on spill onto FY26 as well. Okay. Thank thank you, sir, uh, for and all the best to the team, sir. On the oil and gas front, uh, I missed the initial part, so I just go through it. If I have some follow-up, I'll. Contact the investor. I wish to make new demands. Thank you, sir. And all the best. Thank you. 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 Thank you we have been able to address all your queries we remain committed to creating value for our stakeholders and our focus is on delivering improved return on equity and return on capital employed i look forward to speaking to you once again in near future meanwhile please feel free to reach out to our investor relations team siddharth salil or sga or ir agency for any questions or feedbacks Thank you and good day. Thank you. On behalf of Wellspun Enterprises Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines.